as a filmmaker, there are multiple things that you have to think of and consider as you are going through pre-production, as you are going through production and post-production. What's often kind of overlooked, and I think this is where I think women have a better understanding than us, hence women being filmmakers, is that pretty stories aren't interesting. Uh, polished stories aren't interesting. So if you are, you know, in the film industry or you are a writer or whatever the case may be, you've probably come across the term story arc. In another way, it's, it's called a three act structure. There is the exposition. That's the beginning. These are the characters. Here's where we are. Here is the thing that we are fighting for or the thing that this story is going to be about. There's the climax. Pun is very intended. It's a double entendre and I'll get to it. And then there's the resolution. And then you have some stories. Um, that are cyclical. It goes status quo, this is the real world. Fantasy, here's the imagined world or a better world. And then going back to the real world. And I say that to say, because of how women dispositionally are, I think they're a bit more familiar with that perspective on life than men are. And I, and I, I, I don't think it's necessarily just a bad thing. Women are also addicted to drama. This is something else you have to understand about females. That's very true. <laughs> females are That's addicted to drama. They are entertained no, by drama. What, what does a woman do in her spare time? She watches the Kardashians drama and think, I need to relax. Let me watch a, a murder documentary about a serial killer. <laughs> who chops people's heads off so I can have a nice good night's sleep in bed. They're addicted to this shit. They love drama. <laughs> I think it's a bad thing in, in some sense, but I think it's also a good thing in some sense. That's why we say, you know, uh, men build a house, women make it a home, story. Women make life worth living, story. Women are the decoration. Women are the joy, right? One of my favorite songs by uh, Hosier, uh, it's called Take Me to Church. He said, she's the giggle at a funeral. There is an essence that women carry that is not just intoxicating, but inspiring. And I think as a filmmaker, <laughs> you have to have a similar essence. You have to have a similar eye. You have to have a similar perspective. And that perspective is what helps you tell more compelling stories. Some of the things that you learn as a filmmaker, which I think translates perfectly to the male-female dynamic, is a concept called dirtying the frame. As a storyteller, you want to create depth and dimension with your characters. You want to create depth and dimension with your environments. Uh, you want to create depth and dimension with your perspectives as well, right? Like there, there's a certain reason why Stanley Kubrick put the camera over here versus over there. Or the, the B shot was shot low looking up versus high looking down. Like all these things are very, very intentional as filmmakers. And I think that women, unlike men, are a bit more sensitive to and a bit more excited about, enthusiastic about the process of her life as a story and the characters in that story. You might laugh because every time I sign my name, I put a gold star after it, but it's a metaphor and metaphors are important. My gold stars are a metaphor for me being a star. I'm so crazy, stupid, happy. I met a boy, a great, sweet, gorgeous, cool ass guy. I think when that's expressed healthily, it leads to creating adventures with other healthy, like-minded individuals. When that's expressed unhealthily, it also results in adventures, but sometimes the adventure is riding around with your dope dealer boyfriend. Sometimes the adventure is uh, domestic violence. Sometimes the adventure is, you know, we're going to break up, get back together, break up and get back together. But the reality is, and this is counterintuitive, dysfunction from the perspective of a filmmaker and ironically from the perspective of a woman is more interesting than function. From the perspective of a filmmaker, texture is interesting. I, I would rather shoot somebody with wrinkled skin than somebody with flawless skin as a filmmaker, especially depending on the story that I'm telling, because the, the visual, because again, all videos are, all movies are, are motion pictures. 
You know, people say a picture is worth a thousand words only if it's interesting, right? If it's not interesting, then a thousand words have to come from somewhere else. Now, the picture, for instance, of a very old face, and please y'all stick with me, <laughs> has a lot more to say than the picture of a very young face, for instance. Just by looking at that picture, every wrinkle essentially tells a story and, and evokes curiosity from the viewer of those stories, right? So from the perspective of a filmmaker, I want faces that look interesting. I want texture. I want dynamic. I want compelling. And similarly, I think as men, since we want peace, since we want predictability, since we want ease, since we want structure, it baffles us, it, it perplexes us how somebody could want texture and difficult, dysfunction, etc. Outside of just the unhealthy piece, I think it's important to understand how women's minds work relative to ours. Got it. And now what are some of your deal breakers? Deal breakers, I don't really like loud, ghetto, disrespectful. Okay. Yeah, All right. deal breakers, so. Got it. Gotcha. Oh. Okay, let's head on over here. Why did we end up popping? I just, I'm not, I'm not loud and rowdy, but I just feel like I might be a lot. I know I feel chill right mm -hmm. now, <laughs> but like, I feel like I might be a lot. That's why I think other than, you know, it's also a fad, right? It's it's in style right now, but I, I think that's why facial hair for women is a bit more interesting than, than smooth skin than just a smooth, cleanly shaven face. It looks more mature. It looks more uh, grizzled. It looks like there, there are more synonyms uh, that you could come up with for the texture that, that is achieved with additional facial hair than nothing. So when I see, going back to the image of Tyrone and the actor who plays him, John Boyega, from the perspective of a filmmaker and a woman, this aesthetic tells more stories than this aesthetic. And if we go back to the understanding that for women, the story is the most important piece, it starts to make a bit more sense. I'm afraid that I might be sounding too esoteric or like I'm making excuses for women or whatever the case may be. But again, like I think this channel in general is to bridge the gaps of understanding. So I'm hoping by this perspective that I have. Maybe there's a bit more understanding of not how women think per se, because again, this is just my theory, but an understanding of the difference in how we think, right? Because because a lot of this shit, does, that's, that's why usually I call it a paradox, right? A lot of this shit doesn't make any sense. I don't think it's supposed to, <laughs> but I think our ability to understand it and navigate it is, um, is 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 our strength as men you know I, I think just looks maxing is a mistake if you don't understand some of the psychological things that are also associated with attracting women because then you only attract a certain type of woman who's only interested in consuming male men men physically right that's the reality that a lot of pickup artists won't won't tell you i think i think the other thing too is you know life in general if i ever write a book i, I might title it Life is about me and me is an acronym for managing expectations. I think that misery and, and sadness and inability to cope is in direct correlation with your expectations of life, of situations, of events, of people either being met or not being met. And I think, unfortunately, at least I can speak for myself. A lot of the dysfunction that I've had with women in my in, in my life, outside of her actions or my actions, was directly correlated with my expectations of who I thought women were. And also my expectations of who I thought I had to be for them. Really? I thought women with sugar and spice and everything nice, just like Prior everybody to else. This. Not just with this, but even in my everyday life, like I've I have such a clear perspective. That again, the magic of, damn, she got fairy dust coming out of her ass is gone. That's one of the trade-offs of uh, understanding. I remember there's, um, there's this book called The Seven Books of Moses. And it's apparently like a spell book. And the story behind it is anybody who reads this whole book will go insane. 
which for me, I interpreted it as like our human brains are not supposed to be able to comprehend everything. Yeah. Some sense of ignorance is bliss from a understanding of women perspective. The ignorant bliss of my youth is gone, <laughs> which is sad. And I didn't consider that. Yeah, I can't really say which is better, which I'd prefer having an understanding. I will say that, uh, but I do miss the magic. And the process of learning what what's true, what's not, what works and what doesn't, right? So things like this, things like this theory that women are filmmakers is my attempt to try to make sense with that. Uh, make sense of that, I'm sorry. Hey, if you've made it all the way to the end, please click that like and subscribe button. Also share this with somebody that you think would gain value from it. Click the thumbnail at the top if you want the full video. Click the thumbnail at the bottom if you want a video that's closely related to this. Again, like, share, subscribe. Appreciate you guys for watching. Check out some more of our content. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.